Over three and a half decades ago, Acura introduced a hot little premium entry-level car, car called the Integra. Now, the Integra was a huge hit for enthusiasts because it blended all the usual characteristics that we expect from American Honda. It was reliable, it was well-made, it was fun to drive, it had a high-revving VTEC engine, and you could also get it with a manual transmission. Now, sadly, it's been about 22 years since we've seen the beloved Integra nameplate in the States, but thankfully for 2023, Acura is ready to bring the nameplate back. As you can see today, I'm actually out in Austin, Texas, because we're driving the brand new fifth generation Acura Integra. As you can see, it's built off of the current generation Honda Civic SI platform, which means it's the first ever Integra with a turbocharged engine. It's got that same five door hatchback body style with a sleek all new design. And it's also available with a six speed manual transmission. So if you're an enthusiast out there looking for a performance oriented luxury hatchback, how does the all new Integra stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Now, I've always thought that the Integra was always such a powerful name, and because of that rich heritage, let's start with what's powering the all-new 2023 Integra. Now, if you guys are pretty familiar with the Civic Si, this is essentially going to be the same powertrain. This is the first ever turbocharged Integra in the Acura lineup. It's the company's 1.5 liter direct injection double overhead cam VTEC turbo engine. Uh, it puts out around 17.8 PSI of boost, so just under 18 pounds of boost pressure. It's a twin scroll turbo design, and it makes 200 horsepower and 192 pound-feet of torque. Now, if you guys are keeping score of the third generation Integra from the uh, late 90s, early 2000s, the Type R, remember, was the halo of the Integra that made 195 horsepower. So on paper, this doesn't look like a lot of power, but remember, this vehicle is kind of like a replacement for the old Integra GS or the Integra LS. So this is a nice progression. It goes out between your choice, between a six-speed manual with a limited slip differential and active rev matching. This is what this particular one has, or you can also get it with a CVT. Now the CVT is actually the first application of the 200 horsepower turbo uh, with an automatic. So we haven't had a chance to drive that yet because Honda doesn't offer that combination in SI. Just know that the CVT doesn't come with a limited slip differential. The manual does. All Integras right now are only front wheel drive. Now, of course, there's rumors about an Integra Type S. We kept asking Acura at this event and they remain very tight lipped, but we should be seeing that hopefully within the next year or so. We have no idea what powertrain that will have. We have no idea that that will be all wheel drive or if it'll be a front wheel drive model. Now, fuel economy was just released. This model here is rated at 26 in the city and 36 on the highway. That's a one MPG reduction versus the Civic Si. And if you guys go for the uh, Integra uh, with the automatic, that increases the uh, gas mileage to 30 in the city and 37 on the highway. That's with the 17 inch wheels. The 18 inch wheels drops it down to 29.36. Premium gas is recommended, although you don't have to put premium in it. It has around a 12 gallon gas tank, so it's gonna get pretty good gas mileage. And as the Integra sits, it's about 100 pounds heavier versus a comparable Civic Si. This one here is right around 3,073 pounds. The automatic is actually just over 3,100 pounds. Now let's go ahead and close the hood. As you can see, it's held up by a strut, so there's no prop rod, or there's no hydraulic struts it's held up by a prop rod. But once I shut the hood, you can see the styling of the new Integra really follows the design language that we've seen on other Acuras. In fact, if you look at it from the front, I think this is the problem with the Integra, the new one. It looks a lot like a TLX in the front. There are a couple of Small differences to show you this is an Integra. The grille, especially if you guys look at that, this is Acura's new frameless diamond pentagon design. You can see it doesn't have an actual border around the uh, diamond pentagon. It certainly looks pretty aggressive. I like the intricate diamonds that are actually in the actual grille. Uh, it's got the latest generation of Acura chicane jewel eye LED headlights. You can see the LED daytime running light and turn signal has been kind of changed in its design where it's above the actual LEDs along with the turn signals. You can see LED low and high beams. And then if you guys go for an A-spec trimming up, they come with LED fog lights, which is typically not what you can find in the competition. I also really love the black accents with this platinum white pearl with the black here, the black here, the black lower front skirt. Some of these vents here are functional, which is nice. And overall, I think the Integra is a nice looking car especially if you look at it here you can see that's how you're gonna know it's an Integra it shows that heritage there the lineage with where it actually says Acura on the headlight Integra on the front bumper that's an homage to the original model along with the tech package that this model has it also includes the front and rear parking sensors which is nice but overall some of you may criticize it for looking too much like a TLX but you can't deny this is an attractive looking uh, five-door hatchback. Now looking around the side profile, you can see compared to the Honda Civic on which this is based. Remember, this is built off of the newest generation of compact modular architecture. 
However, the only thing it shares with the Civic is the wheelbase at 107.7 inches long. This car at 185.6 inches long is about an, an inch and a half longer versus the current generation Civic Si. It's like six inches longer versus the old Acura ILX. This car is about an inch wider than a Civic, so around a 72 inches long overall. It's a really nicely proportioned car that looks a lot like a TLX, or Acura likes to say it looks more like a swoopy coupe because remember, this is a hatchback. Uh, the A-Spec model, aside from the A-Spec badge here, also includes these really nice sharp gray wheels. These are an 18-inch design wrapped in 235-45 Continental Conti Pro All-Season Contact tires. You cannot get summer tires on this car like you can on the SI. You can see the brakes, 12.3-inch diameter in the front, just a single uh, piston floating caliper. I would like to see Acura put better brakes on this car. A red painted caliper would have been nice. The rears are like 11.3-inch rotors. Uh, the car has a four-wheel independent suspension, which is nice. But again, really, really distinctive looking car from most angles. The uh, sunroof you can see standard on all Integras. I would like to see them offer a panel roof, but sadly that's not available. This platinum white with the black accents and the red interior, as you can see, really great color combination. If you'd like, Acura will also sell you an accessory where you can get a 19 inch wheel, you can get a, a full body kit, you can get carbon fiber on the mirror caps, a carbon fiber rear spoiler, but this one here doesn't have any of those accessories. Remember, that's gonna cost a pretty penny at the dealership. Now, following me over to the rear of the vehicle, it has a more distinctive look from the back where obviously you're not gonna compare this or confuse this for a TLX uh, because of that sloping rear roof line. Uh, the rear window also looks pretty good. I like the rear spoiler that's black painted. Again, you can get this carbon with a bigger wing if you want from the uh, dealer as an accessory. There's an A-spec badge here. The taillights remind you a lot of something like the Hyundai Genesis Coupe, but that's not a bad thing. This car, I saw it on the road a couple times today, looks pretty distinctive. You can see Integra is stamped in the actual bumper along with full LED taillights, rear parking sensors. Then down here, the A-Spec model has its own unique, more aggressive rear bumper. And then dual exhaust tips. The chrome outlet exhaust looks good. We'll go ahead and fire it up so you can hear what the engine sounds like real quick. So remember, this is just a regular Integra. The exhaust sounds okay. Uh, it sounds a little bit quieter, I believe, versus the last Civic Si. Now, opening up the trunk capacity, remember, this is a lift back, which really gives the Integra that versatility that you're looking for in today's sedan market, especially with everybody going to crossovers. You get just under 25 cubic feet of space back here, which is easily 10 to 15 more cubic feet of space versus its competitors like the Mercedes CLA, the BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe, and the Audi A3. The liftover is pretty high, because unlike the Civic hatch, you can see the bumper area stays put here instead of having that bigger cutout. So you kind of have to lift up stuff back here. It would be nice to see this as a power opening, but remember this car is built to a certain price point. Uh, if you look underneath the floor here, you can see there is a little bit of storage here. There's a fix a flat kit or an air compressor because this car does not come with a spare tire, but at least you do get that storage. A little bit more storage over there. If you fold down those seats, Acura didn't provide us with a number with the seats folded down for cubic feet, but I'd probably estimate it's around 45 cubic feet. That's what the previous generation Civic hatch, and I have no doubt that this would be pretty similar to that. Moving to the inside of the brand new 2023 Integra. First thing I'm noticing, the step in height, it's a low sedan, so you kind of have to fall into the vehicle. But once you get in and shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. Remember, it's built off of the current generation Civic platform. Now here's the key fob for the vehicle. You can see it's Acura's newest key. It's their intelligent access key. You have the usual buttons to lock and unlock it. There's no remote start on this fob because this is the manual. Uh, the automatic model with the tech package will give you that. You can also access the Acura link system to access the vehicle remotely, and you can also remote start it from there. This is the manual model, so make sure it's in neutral. Button to fire up the engine is right here. Make sure the clutch is in. You can hear it sounds pretty quiet when it starts up and it sounds just like the Honda Civic Si. No surprise, it's the same uh, engine in this vehicle. And then when you look at the rest of this cabin, I have to say it certainly makes a great first impression. I mean, the interior design is very familiar to the current generation Civic. However, Acura has made some key changes to the, the dash of this vehicle. They also gave it a little bit more standard equipment as well. Before we talk about the dash, I do wanna mention the seats. Now, obviously, how could you not notice the beautiful uh, circuit red leather, which is technically a synthetic leather with the Alcantara. These are the seats that you get on the tech package. 
The red is included if you guys go for the platinum white with the A-spec package. It's got red accents everywhere. The seats are heated uh, and it's a 12-way power adjustment on my side, four-way on the passenger side. You also have a two-person memory, which is definitely nice. If you're looking for cooled seats, which it's about 90 degrees out here in Texas, you cannot get cooled seats on the new Integra, which is a shame. Same thing with a heated steering wheel. You can get a heated wheel if you guys go for a dealer accessory, but it's not from the factory, which is a little bit frustrating. Now, looking at the rest of the door panel here, you can see it's got a soft touch injection molded plastic where the graining feels nice, but I think it would feel nice in a Honda Civic. I expect it a little bit nicer in the Integra. There are some kind of cheaper bits here right by the door handle, which is a texturized gray plastic look. Thankfully, the 16 speaker ELS sound system is a huge upgrade versus the one in the Civic, the 12 speaker Bose. It's got some metal speaker covers in the doors, the window controls, one touch up and down for both the front windows, however, not for the rear. Uh, it's got the latest in Acura window controls, which feel nice, high quality, nice padded armrest over here. Down here, it's all hard touch plastic on the door panel, which is what I expected. Uh, the steering wheel, you can see this is the same steering wheel off of the current generation Civic, but you can see the Integra gives you uh, some upgrades like the red stitching here, which is contrasting. You have the A-Spec badge over here. Instead, you have the Acura logo versus the Honda logo, and then the horn sounds so much better versus the puny little horn that you find on the Civic Si. So thank you Acura for making that small change. The steering wheel itself has a manual tilt and telescoping adjustment, which offers a good amount of adjustability. It's pretty easy to get into this car and get comfortable. Uh, in terms of the instrument panel, you can see this is the full 10.2 inch digital cockpit display. This is a full digital display. The one in the SI, you have the half digital. You have the analog tachometer and the digital speedo. So it's only a seven inch display. So this certainly looks nice. It's standard on even the base Integra. This is somewhat customizable where you can kind of adjust what that looks like. You can adjust what that looks like over there. Uh, or kind of just make it a simpler, simpler display. If you switch the drive modes, you can see it changes the gauges to a red color in sport, normal is white, and then comfort is a blue accented color. So again, that looks pretty nice and it even shows you a little, you know, nice little graphic whenever you change the drive mode over there. There's basically four drive modes. There's also an individual mode, uh, which the individual mode you can kind of customize to your exact liking, the suspension, the steering. This car here has adaptive dampers where you can actually adjust that. That's something that you can't get on the Civic Si. In terms of the rest of the dash, you can see this is a soft touch injection molded plastic, which I would have liked to see this in like with stitching. Even if it's faux stitching, it just would have looked a little bit nicer. My tester does have a 5.3 inch head up display, which is included with the tech package. This is the first model that's built off of the Civic platform to give you a heads up display. So that's definitely a nice addition. The one thing I don't like about this dashboard compared to the Civic is right here. If you guys remember, the Civic has that all metal like um, look to the dash where it almost looks like one big continuous dashboard vent. Instead, Acura gets rid of that and they give us this kind of texturized gray plastic, which just looks a little bit cheap. You do have that look here with the vents, which is kind of taken from the Civic. And these kind of have like a nice satisfying high quality click whenever you're adjusting that. But I think Acura should have used that design from the Civic and given this to the, and Honda should have used this for the Civic. So that's kind of a small little nitpick, nitpick of mine. This area right here is also padded, and it feels like this is actually covered in leather, but it's not, although it looks like this is almost like a stitched material that's kind of inside out. So this certainly looks okay. Uh, unlike the SI, you do have a wireless phone charging pad right here, which you can't even get on the SI. You have two USB charging ports, an A and a C charging port. You have a 12 volt power outlet, and you can see my tester here has the lovely six speed, which this shifter, is a really old shifter, but I love this shifter. It basically is pulled out of a Civic Si or an S2000. The manual itself is typical Acura Honda with its crisp throws. The clutch is super light. I also like the aluminum pedals that you get. Um, we'll talk about how this drives later on in the video when we talk about the driving scene. You can see here is your electronic parking brake over here. There's your auto start, stop, defeat button. Then your drive mode selector, like I said, is a toggle right here, uh, which is pretty easy to use and you can kind of customize that. Lots of piano black plastic over here, which you can see collects fingerprints uh, and dust pretty easily. So that's something for you OCD people may not like that big cup holder area over here Surprisingly, there's no lid to kind of cover this up if you'd like but the center console is Relatively deep, but not very large. There is no power outlets in there instead It's all right here. And this is also a nice padded lid uh, the glove compartment you can see is a bin style. It's stamped, not lined with felt, but it's a pretty good size. And then above me here, you can see there is some LED map lighting. There's also LED accent lighting throughout the cabin that you get with the tech package, but it's only white. You can't actually change the color. And then you can see here, sunroof, just a standard size sunroof. It's included on every Integra. So if you're looking for a pano roof, you're not gonna be able to find that. But overall, the interior has a lot of tech features that you can't get on the Civic, which is nice, like the power seats with memory, the heads up display, the 16 speaker ELS sound system. But there are two features that Acura missed, and that's uh, basically not giving us um, 
cooled seats or a heated steering wheel, but at least they threw in the nine inch display here, which I forgot to mention, this nine inch display is included with the tech package. It has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It looks fantastic. You have a volume knob here uh, and a tuning button over here. But just remember, if you guys don't get the tech package, you're gonna be saddled with a seven inch display, which is two inches smaller than this. And it's gonna have to be plugged in if you want the CarPlay. So you have to go for the nine inch display if you want the wireless function and then, the backup camera you can see, same one that's in the Civic. It's got rear cross traffic alert. It's got three different views, but no full 360 camera. So moving on to the back seat of the Integra, this is where that longer wheelbase is really going to help for those of you who need to actually use the back seat to carry adults. Now Acura says you get 37.4 inches of legroom back here, which is actually tops in the class. This has about two to three more inches of legroom versus the BMW, Mercedes, or the Audi. You can see at five foot seven, I can kind of stretch my legs out pretty well. There's a good amount of foot space here. Surprisingly, there is a hump that takes up room here. Um, so that for the middle passenger, it may be a little bit tight. You can see there's two USB-A charging sockets, but surprisingly no rear seat air vents. That is very frustrating considering this is a premium brand. Uh, no heated back seats as well. And then you can see in terms of storage pockets, you have one right here on the passenger side. You have a couple of storage pockets here on the door panels. And then you can see here, unlike the front seats, which have a soft touch injection molded plastic, this is hard touch plastic. And there's also a kind of a cheaper material over here, but at least this is padded where I would rest my elbow, which is definitely nice. Uh, coming over here to the center, you can see there's an armrest that folds down, gives you two cup holders. And then of course, because this is a hatchback, you can see this folds down and gives you kind of that versatility to get into the trunk area. We can kind of stuff stuff up to the ceiling. So overall, the back seat is certainly usable, but I think Acura missed the mark by not offering rear seat air vents or heated back seats back here. All right, so Rob and I are finally driving the reincarnated 2023 Acura Integra. And Rob, you'd probably say that your 18-year-old self would be very jealous right now, right? Oh, I would not have thought that here we are 20, 20 years <laughs> later driving something that's so similar, but also a good amount different. Yeah, I mean, Rob used to work at an Acura dealership all those years ago because you're old so drove my first nsx there <laughs> so now that we're finally driving the new integra which just like the old integra it's a civic based car although acura said that they did change a lot it doesn't share a single body panel with the current civic aside from the wheelbase this is a platform that's two percent stiffer which isn't really much but um at least it comes with a turbo and a manual and a limited slip differential this is the first integra ever to be turbocharged so let's go ahead and see what we can get zero to 60 wise in this thing <laughs> Traction issues, <laughs> front wheel drive. <laughs> I gotta go to third to go to 60. Wow, so we're not gonna take that number because 8.28 is very, very slow, but you can do a front wheel burnout in this thing, a front wheel drive burnout in it pretty well. <laughs> we'll let you drive the CVT later. <laughs> yeah, well, John really can drive stick, guys. He drove stick for me out in a long time. Hey, I can drive <laughs> stick pretty well. It's just, it's not always consistent to launch a stick shift car and it takes practice and it really takes like a nice closed area to drive stick and try to get it launched right. And you gotta do multiple launches in it. So I think the best that I got in a Civic SI when we drove it last year was like 6.9, which again, not the best launch. This car does have the limited slip diff and it also has active rev matching, which means you can kind of plant your foot in corners and it hits, ooh, when you hit the rev limiter in this, it really cuts the power hard. <laughs> I, I shifted it around 6,600, which I wanted this engine to keep pulling to like seven, but sadly it does not keep pulling to seven. So for those of you who remember the ILX with the manual, me, um, it doesn't rev quite as hard. Uh, and it also doesn't sound quite as good, but it's also a nice sound. Rob, would you say the sound is fine? I think that it sounds like it's really, it's, it's happy to rev. It's enjoying what it's doing. I mean, it's yeah. not that much different from NSI, like you said. You know, it's not gonna be, oh my goodness, this is so much different, but no, it still sounds good. It's yeah, it, I think the aftermarket's really going to open this car up tremendously with an exhaust or some sort on it. Um, and then of course there's the Type S, which Acura was very tight-lipped about. Every time we asked about it, they're just looking at us like we're crazy. <laughs> You can hear the VTEC actually kick in above five. Uh, this car does have VTEC. It's got direct injection. It's a double overhead cam engine. It puts out around eight, almost 18 pounds of boost, which is actually, I looked up the numbers, a little bit less than the old SI engine of the previous gen, which did about 20 pounds of boost. Um, so not sure why they downgraded the boost, but it has, that's the reason I guess why it also has five less horsepower than the old SI engine. Was the torque curve still as broad as the SI? I think it's at 1500. I'd have to look up that spec. I didn't quite see. Uh, I'd have, I didn't quite see that in the press kit, and I don't remember what Honda was saying when we did when we drove the SI. I bet you they may have lowered the boost just because there's a, it's a broader torque curve, just because you know. 
premium Acura. Yes. But you know what? This is not bad. It sounds good. It keeps pulling all the way to six. That's I, I, nice. I was actually impressed. I was up to it. Mm -hmm. And this car also has amplitude reactive dampers. So we have the adaptive dampers, which you don't get on the SI anymore. You used to. Um, but Honda took that away for the new gen, and now we know why. They were, they were saving it for the Integra with the tech package, which is the only way you can get the stick. Uh, in sport mode right now, with the dampers in the firm setting, it still rides really well. Like, we have these 18-inch wheels on 235 with uh, Michel or Continental tires, I'm sorry. And it rides fine. I mean, I can play with the drive modes here, put it into normal, I can put it into comfort. Uh, the steering definitely gets a lot lighter. The active sound control kind of turns itself off, so there is some kind of amplification of noise into the speakers of the cabin to make the engine sound a little bit more interesting. But yeah, it, it, it needs to be able to give you a good ride quality, and I think it does. Um, I'd have to drive it back to back with the BMW, the Mercedes, and the Audi. The A3, the new one for me, I think had a really good ride quality. But again, you can't get the, any of those cars with a manual. It's interesting because Acura markets this car as best-in-class rear legroom, best-in-class cargo, uh, and it, they also advertise the power-to-weight ratio as better than the base engines in those cars, which I wasn't expecting, like 15.4, while the others are like 16 uh, pounds per horsepower. But at, at around just over 3,000 pounds, it's only about 100, 100 pounds heavier than the uh, SI, which I was surprised by, Rob, weren't you? It's not that much heavier. It's not, and it's funny talking to Andrew. He said that this trim, the A-spec, well, I'll let you do this first. Yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we have to try this again, sorry. That shift to third really slows down the zero to 60, 7.42 seconds there. You shaved off almost a whole second. <laughs> there we go. So I tried just a 2,000 RPM clutch dump there. So <laughs> the, the, I'm be curious to see what the what the automatic gets. We'll, we'll briefly drive that when we get to the lunch spot, but uh, sorry, continue, Rob. What were you saying about? What? Oh, well, Andrew, he was yep. saying that this trim, the, the top trim, the, the tech with the A-spec actually weighs less than the base with the CVT. Only okay. by, I think he said 12 pounds or something like that, but the top trim with the manual weighs less than the, the base with the CVZ. So which the which makes sense, because automatics, are, they tend to be heavier than yeah, their manual. I mean, you know, there's a, not a lot of more equipment in here, but there's a good amount more equipment in the base, you know? Yeah, so I am I think Acura did a great job with the, the weight, and yes, the road is uh, pretty bad over here, but you know what, the car structure feels stiff. This is base, This is built on their new compact body structure that the current Civic is riding on. Um, this car is about an inch and a half longer. It's about an inch wider as well. You definitely f get a sense that you're driving something a little bit more premium than the Civic. Uh, you can feel the width in this car, I think. I know you'll talk about it later, but do you think from a driving perspective only, just driving, not necessarily features, this is worth the grand over an SI? I would have to say, from a driving perspective, hmm. You know, they're actually going to be dropping off an SI when I get back t tonight. Uh, back back to York, PA, and I'll have to I'll have to see there when I when I you, you guys will have to watch my updated review on the SI uh, when we film that. But because I'm not entirely sure from a driving perspective, this feels very similar to an SI. Um, the ride quality I would say is a smidge more comfortable because of the dampers. But you've got the same engine, you've got the same transmission, uh, you've got the same kind of steering feel of this car. You're buying this car because of the features and because of the hatch. That's the reason why you're going to spend the eight grand plus the Acura badge. You're going to get free maintenance for two years, uh, which you don't get with Hondas. The seats hold you better than that. Remember that we said the SI seats were not holding us very well, I think? They weren't great. And again, if you want leather with Alcantara, <laughs> this thing will chirp into second all day long. But man, it really hits the rev limiter hard at 6,500. I want this engine to keep pulling because that's what Hondas are known for is like, you want to rev them past their, their red lines, but... Not a GSR. <laughs> no, not a GSR. Remember, this is turbocharged. So yes, we're driving the first turbocharged Integra. And I bet it could probably do a zero to 60 sprint in under seven seconds. If you could get the launch right, you can get it on a nice, you know, straight road where there's no, no curves or no elevation changes or anything like that. So. So Rob beat me by 0.3 seconds there, and it was also going slightly downhill. Well, I won, I won the sixes. <laughs> <laughs>
Very good performance out of the gate for a manual. As a daily driver, just like the SI, this is fantastic. It's gonna get you know, 26, 36 MPG. Premium is recommended. You don't have to put premium in it, uh, which is good considering today's gas prices. But this car only has a 12 gallon gas tank. On a full tank, it was showing about 360 miles. And this is with, with the car only having 350 miles on, on it. Uh, so I suspect this car should be able to do 400 plus miles on a full tank and you won't be spending too much at the pump. So in typical Honda Acura fashion, it's a great daily driver. It's not going to break the bank. Uh, it's very comfortable to use as well. In terms of tech, we've got that heads up display, which is super cool to find on a, on a Civic based car. This is the first Civic based vehicle to have a heads up display. It's only 5.3 inches, but it does show your driver assist and stuff, speed limit and your speed here. Uh, you've got blind spot monitoring, it's got the active lane keep assist. It has adaptive cruise control, but not the low speed follow. You have to go to the CVT model to get the low speed follow feature where it's, it basically includes the traffic jam assistance. Um, but other than that, I like the seats. I like the visibility in here. It's also pretty good. The view out of the back is also not obstructed or anything. It just kind of you know, looks very clear. Uh, and uh, it is missing some tech features that I think that Acura should have included, like cooled seats and a heated steering wheel, which you can get that as a dealer accessory. And maybe even a 360 camera would have been nice, although it's not really necessary on a car like this. But yeah, overall, let's, uh, let's hop into the automatic really briefly and see what that one's like to drive. Uh, but overall, if you guys have your name down for a manual and you're like, or you're just considering an SI, you should have this one at the very top of your list. So while as fun as the manual was driving it, the CVT automatic is the transmission that a lot of people are gonna end up choosing. Acura says that the reservations, the early ones, are about 65% are going for the manual, but I think in reality, over 50% is gonna go for the automatic. So of course, they do have the automatic here. I must try out and see what we got, what we get zero to 60. Now in the manual, we got 7.1 was the best that Rob could do. Let's see what we can do with the automatic. It's in sport for everything. All right, we got 7.40 seconds, which is slower than what I was expecting this car to do. Keep in mind, it is about 90 degrees out here, so it's pretty hot, um, but this is the first application that we're driving with the 200 horsepower 1.5 turbo and a CVT. And granted, this CVT has been updated to reflect the extra horsepower of this engine. It comes with paddle shifters, a sport mode in the transmission, and it also comes with uh, seven virtual, virtual gears. Uh, the transmission also is designed to mimic gears as much as it can to give you that more uh, normal feel. And also it's pretty responsive, putting my foot down here, it automatically puts the engine in the meat of its power band. It definitely doesn't sound terrific. Uh, it basically drives a lot like the Honda Civic on which this car is based. But obviously for an automatic, it's not bad. But remember the old ILX had a dual clutch. It had a seven speed or an eight speed dual clutch transmission. So I am sad that Acura didn't put that in this car, but let's go ahead and see one more time what we can do. This time we'll put it back into sport and we'll just floor it. It's really slow to start up, but once it gets going, it's shifts, it does fake these fake shifts, 7.48 seconds. So surprisingly, you guys will be happy to hear this, at least in my initial testing, the manual is faster. Of course, you have to get the launch right. I was expecting the automatic to be faster and it's actually not. So 7.4 is the best that I got in the manual, 7.42. Rob was able to knock it down to 7.1, but 7.5 for the automatic, it's perfectly acceptable. Um, I do think that I was hoping it'd be a little bit faster, but I'll have to retest this car when I get it back home when it's not 90 degrees out here. I'm also not entirely sure if this is at ele elevation or not, but overall uh, with the automatic, how responsive it is, you can feel it just puts the engine right in the meat of its power band. The ride quality is still really good. The road noise is a little bit louder on this particular road. It's not the smoothest road. And I also wanna briefly mention, I forgot to mention that on the interior, this car, even with the tech package, does not include embedded factory GPS, which, you know, I wanna complain about, but most people end up using their smartphones anyways. And the way that the nine inch touchscreen works with the wireless CarPlay, you're probably not gonna miss that embedded GPS anyways.
right, so there we got 7.10 seconds there. So that was a little bit better. Now that was more downhill, 3% gradient versus one. So I'd say the 7.5 is pretty accurate, but again, I'll retest this vehicle when I get it back home uh, in a setting that I'm more familiar with. So it's been about 22 years since we've seen the beloved Integra name here in US showrooms. And I have to say, I was a big fan of the previous generation Integra. The name Integra is just such a powerful name to me. It's the only Acura model here in US showrooms that actually has a name that's not a silly alphanumeric name. And after spending the day driving the all new 2023 Integra, I am simply impressed with the entire package that Acura yeah, is offering here. This car basically met my expectations. It's built off of the current generation Honda Civic platform, which is a great place to start. The current Civic feels a lot like an Accord. So it gave Acura the basis, a premium basis to basically offer this entry level model into the brand. It has really good balance of ride and handling. It's got a really well thought out interior with a lot of great tech features in it. And the fact that Acura is offering this fully loaded version with a six speed manual to appease enthusiasts really shows that Acura cares. They really listen to what their customers are looking for. And I think that's really important. The automatic obviously I think is going to be the higher selling model. But for those of you who want a daily driver, if you're considering an SI, you should definitely consider this car. And that's where we come to the pricing of the new Integra because this car starts at $30,800. That's only about two grand more versus a Honda Civic SI. Now that is something that you need to consider because if you want the manual, you have to go for the A-Spec tech package with the tech, the tech package is like $36,000. Oh, hey, Tommy. Very interesting. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. Why don't they have any of the blue or the red ones? Um, I think Acura said that they were not very many choices on colors because of supply chain issues. Gotcha. They wanted to piss you off. But they the were... white is really nice with the red. But which one would you get? I would totally get it in this color combo. Would you? I would, yeah. Not the red? Uh, the red is nice, but I really like red leather. So right. I, I, it's because red on red is a little too much for me. All right, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> that was Tommy from TFL who was uh, just pulling in as well because he's also been driving the car. But um, go back into the price. Go back. Let's go back to the price of this because this one here at thirty six thousand dollars with destination, you're like thirty six eight. I think is actually a great deal. It's about eight grand more versus a Honda Civic Si, which I think it's worth it. I mean, obviously the performance is the same, the powertrain's the same. The interior similar, but you do get some nice features like the ELS sound system, the heads up display, the 12 way power seats, which are leather, uh, they're heated. Uh, and you also get that somewhat nicer feel, especially the hatchback for you, versatility. That's the whole reason why you're going to buy this car. So for around 36 grand, remember, you could get something like a Volkswagen GTI for around the same price as well. Now, the Volkswagen does have more horsepower. However, it doesn't have quite the premium name. And I also think that with this car, the style of it. I think Acura just kind of nailed it. So what I'd like to see Acura do, offer a Type S model for sure, offer a, a model with super handling all-wheel drive. Only time will tell whether that will come to the market or not. But honestly, at $36,000, I think this car is a steal. And if you're considering a daily driver and you want something with a little bit more practicality, a little bit more space, and a little bit more luxury versus what you find in all the other mainstream brands, you should definitely put the new Integra at the very top of your list. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2023 Acura Integra. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.